Um, I want to get uh, started with, um, we're going to go with some chants uh, in between, but we also have some speakers here that are going to be really powerful. So I want to uh, move the floor or allow those folks to come on up and do their speeches. So I think we're going to start with Cody and I'm going to let uh, Cody introduce himself. All right, how's it going, y'all? Yeah. All right, so we're going to try one of these chants we did earlier, okay? So when we say PSU, y'all are going to say, cut ties with Boeing. Can we try that? Yeah. All right, PSU. Cut ties with Boeing. PSU. Cut ties with Boeing. PSU. Cut ties with Boeing. PSU. You think they can hear us? No. All right, let's keep trying. PSU. Cut ties with Boeing. PSU. All right, thanks y'all so much for coming out today. So like Zach said, my name is Cody. I'm an organizer with the Resist US-led war movement. It's got, our name's got kind of a mouthful, but we really want you to know what we're about. And what we're about is we are against imperialist war where Ever it has its tentacles. That doesn't just mean invasions. It doesn't just mean military occupations. It means military aid to other regimes so the U.S. can kind of act like its hands are clean. Does that sound familiar to you right now? The current genocide against the people of Palestine is 100% U.S.-led war. There were new weapons that were that are en route right now to the Zionist regime. They're a few days late because I don't know if y'all followed what happened in Oakland or what happened in Tacoma. We had people blocking those weapons wherever they're going. It's on its way to Greece. I think there's some comrades waiting there to stop those too. Because that's what it takes to stop U.S.-led war. It means going, looking at who the war profiteers are and finding ways to put yourselves in between their supply chain wherever you can. Here's the issue, though. Here's the part they really don't want you to know about with that military supply chain. It's not just about producing weapons. It's not just about shipping weapons all over the place. It's also about the kind of things they do to make you think that this is all a good idea. Weapons companies, I mean, I'm, 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 I don't even like that term. They're war profiteers. That's what they are. Right. These war profiteering companies will do whatever they can to make you think that they're just helping out the economy. They're just providing us things like planes that we can fly on when we're going on vacation. That's what companies like Boeing are telling you. What they're not telling you is over half of their production is war material. It's fighter jets. It's attack helicopters. It's missiles that are bombing down on the people of Gaza right now every single day. That is coming from the same companies that give us planes and say they're just helping us go on vacation. But now coming back to that final piece of the supply chain. Because these companies need people to make to get the business flowing. They need managers. They need salespeople. Where do they recruit from these people? PSU. PSU. <laughs> I'm gonna read you something. This doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from any of us here. This actually comes, these words are directly from PSU itself. Portland State University has a quote, special hiring relationship with Boeing. <laughs> PSU is funneling students into this war profiteering company so that they will manage the supply chain that eventually drops those bombs on people just trying to live on their land. Is that right to you? Yeah. Have y'all heard of the military industrial complex? Yeah. It's time to, to widen our view. We are fighting against the military industrial educational complex here on PSU campus. It is time to fight back. Today, like Zach said, is an international day of actions, but put on by the Resist US-led war movement. We're calling it Cut Ties with Occupation and Genocide. We're also supporting actions tomorrow for the Shut It Down for Palestine movement. We got people taking action all over today. I just saw a video from friends of mine in Toronto who did a die-in at Scotia Bank for, fun for funding war profiteers that are sending money to the 
to the Zionist occupation. We have an action planned in two days in Kyoto, Japan, from literally one corner of the world to the other. These are happening every day. So let's keep it up. Please sign our petition. And one more time, PSU! That time was mine. That's right, thank you, y'all. Thank you so much, Cody. Let's try, let's try what I heard at the March on Washington. Did anyone see the March on Washington that happened last weekend? Yeah, a couple hundred thousand people, right? There was one that I liked that I heard. No ceasefire, no vote. 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 Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Yep. So why I like that one so much is because, you know, we've all been told as we've been growing up, right, that we have to choose between the lesser of two evils. Which one is the lesser of two evils right now? So who do we vote for? We got to withhold our votes, use our power, folks. So that's why that no ceasefire, no vote was really powerful to me. And thank you for doing that chant. But um, let's move on to our next speaker. Um, we've got Ahmed, and I want to bring uh, Ahmed up to the mic. Thank you. So I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ahmed El Zubaydi. I'm a Portland State student. And thank you all for gathering today. I am very aware that all of our voices have taken a terrible beating over the past month. So I'm going to spare us from further chanting and take a moment of silence for all the millions of people killed across the Middle East by the Western war machine. When I visited my homeland of Iraq for the first time in 2005, the trip brought me so much excitement. I was 10 years old at the time, and we took a trip to the Warqa, which are Mesopotamian ruins. This trip was extremely fun and valuable for me, as it inspired my love of history. As many 10-year-olds do, after a long and fun day, I took a nap. It was during this nap that my trip turned into a nightmare. I woke up to the loudest bang I had ever heard. The vibrations shook my very bones, shifted the house, and shattered all the windows. I began to panic as the explosion dissipated. My first reaction was to run and try to find my mother and father who had taken my autistic brother to see family. As fear gripped my mind and body, my cousins came to my aid knowing this was new for me. I thought this was a terrorist attack. I later learned this was a US bombing campaign. Mm. As I sat quaking in fear, every bomb that exploded in our vicinity, sorry. <laughs> As I sat quaking in fear, every bomb that landed increased my worry for my family. Were they alive? Would they be able to keep my brother quiet and away from the windows? Would keeping him safe endanger their lives? By the end of it all, five bombs dropped in our vicinity. Later that night, I found out they had bombed the market, killing many of the people I had come to know and love. On that day in 2005, I lost my innocence. Standing here today, I am torn between my identity as a Portland State student and my heritage as an Arapi. I carry an immeasurable grief for, of a homeland ravaged by conflict, an Arapi life toll in the millions, with Boeing's weaponry at the forefront. It's a personal history marred by violence, the echoes of which will reverberate through future generations, scarring even those unborn. Portland State purports to be a vanguard of progress, yet this alliance with Boeing belies that claim. For us, particularly those from the Middle Eastern community, this partnership is not a mere financial transaction. It is a symbol of our darkest days, a perpetual reminder of our loss and our anguish. This is not an indictment of Boeing's employees. That's a conversation for another day, but a call for PSU to realign their values with their fiscal decisions. It's an appeal for genuine empathy and acknowledgement of our community's ongoing suffering, coupled with a brave step towards meaningful action 
In my capacity as an accountant, dealing with the cold calculus of financial instruments, I have come upon figures that chill to the very bone. Consider this. Boeing's fiscal year 22 revenue from weapon sales was $23 billion. Stat that's a staggering 39% of their total revenue. This corporation has seemingly prioritized profit margins over the sanctity of human life, evidenced by their, their poor record in safety aviation. To cast a shocking numerical value, since the conflict began on October 7th, Every life lost coincides with Boeing profiting $579,000. It's a grim tally, marking our lives as mere entries into a ledger for a company marred by destructive and unethical practices. Mm -hmm. But my grievance, my grievance extends beyond uh, Boeing's corporate ethos. I am deeply disheartened by Portland State's association with such an entity. PSU, an institution I once took pride in stands complicit through financial entanglements, favoring corporate alliance over the well-being and values of its student body. In a place where intellectual discourse should flourish, we have been met with resistance for challenging this partnership. Historically, our nation pivoted from its isolationist stance post-Great Depression, when President Franklin Roosevelt propelled us into the throes of World War II marking a resurgence of prosperity through a grim trade of arms, manufacturing. A trend, a trend that has since been woven into the fabric of American fiscal policy. Our hands have since dealt weapons indiscriminately, profiting from the strife and the sorrow that follows. Let PSU be a true exemplar of true, <clears throat> let PSU be an exemplar of true global citizenship, reflecting our commitment to inclusivity not just in words, but in deeds. I urge PSU to sever their ties, financial or otherwise, with Boeing, and to champion peace and healing, fostering a future that respects the human dignity of all, especially those who have suffered in conflict. Yeah. Together, let's pave a way for, for a new legacy, one that celebrates the true essence of education, the advocacy of peace, and the well-being of a diverse student body. Let's divest from Boeing and invest in our futures, not in our deaths. Thank you. Hey, wow. Stop the killing, stop the plunder. PSU is a genocide funder. Stop the killing, stop the plunder. PSU is a genocide funder. Thank you. Woo! I want to bring up Sam from Pixu. Hello. Free Palestine. Hello, my name is Sam. I'm with the Progressive Campus Student Union as well as the International Migrants Alliance. The International Migrants Alliance is an alliance of over 120 different anti-imperialist migrant-led organizations that seeks to address the root causes of forced migration which is militaristic intervention and economic imperialism in the global south. Today I hope to 
share more of a personal story with y'all, namely the story of my father um, and his crossing over to the U.S. My father was 17 when he made the arduous decision to leave his rancho in Zacatecas, Mexico to chase the opportunities taken from his homeland across the U.S.-Mexico border. Some of the most vivid memories I have as a child are those of my stoic father breaking down, his eyes glossy, his lips quivering, expressing to me with a tremoring voice the unspeakable hell he experienced while lost in the Sonoran Desert for several days. The things he had to do to survive. Out of respect for my father, I will not share more details, but I wish you all to know that the PTSD that my father got from crossing the Sonoran Desert is something that he and tens of thousands of migrants will have to carry for the rest of their lives. My father is one of the lucky migrants who actually survived crossing the Sonoran Desert. It is estimated that 7,000 migrants have died or have disappeared in the desert. And this is a direct consequence of US-Mexico border policy, namely the contemporary policy of prevention through deterrence. How many people here have heard of prevention through deterrence before? Raise of hands, please. So most of us here, okay, good, good. For those of you who don't know, prevention through deterrence is a policy that was formally instituted in 1994, which involves the militarizing of common points of entry across the US-Mexico border and the siphoning of migrants into dangerous natural terrains as part of deterring migration. If you look at a lot of the early administrative documents that led up to the instituting of prevention through deterrence as contemporary border policy, you will see that government officials and border patrol agents knew that this policy would have a drastic increase in migrant death while crossing to the United States and they chose to do it anyways. The Disappeared is a report series that was published by a bunch of humanitarian organizations across the southwest borderlands and they write of the US of Customs and Border Patrol's utilization of natural terrains as the following. Extreme heat and bitter cold, scarce and polluted water sources, treacherous topographies and near total isolation from possible rescue are used as weapons of border enforcement. One of the organizations that published this essay series um, that disappeared, also published a report on how border patrol agents have routinely sabotaged migrant aid that is left in the Sonoran Desert, such as water, food, tents, anything that would make the transit livable. And this has happened, it's been documented hundreds of times. Where does Boeing fit into all of this? Boeing is one of the main lobbyists in our country for border militarization and one of the main contractors for Customs and Border Patrol and ICE in militarizing and expanding the border military regime. Yeah. I'm gonna read some stats for y'all, okay? So, whoops. It's all right. So Boeing specifically 
has wait one second. Boeing specifically has a 1.4 billion dollar contract with Customs and Border Patrol and they provide ICE with 737 planes used in ICE deportations. Mm. Mm. They also provide Customs and Border Patrol with $117 million worth of unmanned aircrafts to surveil migrants across the U.S.-Mexico border. <laughs> Boeing, along with Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, Raytheon, as well as other war profiteers, contributed $27.6 million in campaign financing for the Congress Appropriation Committee members that would advocate for border militarization. And they have had 35 lobbying visits to this Appropriations Committee since 2005. <laughs> As has been stated before, Boeing has a lucrative recruitment contract with Portland State University. In light of Boeing's active involvement with the militarization and the lethalizing of the U.S.-Mexico border, as well as, as well as supplying ICE with planes to deport migrants, I find PSU's relationship with Boeing absolutely revolting. That's right. Yeah! Walking down the halls and the buildings of PSU, knowing that they work with and finance war profiteers that were involved in hurting so many people in my community is disgusting. It is disquieting. On what basis does the university hold these special recruitment relationships with Boeing? What purpose does it serve? The collective trauma that has been placed on students from all across the global south, which these corporate war profiteers have been involved in, how will the university justify this to us?